Darren, thank you for the intro, and, and uh, thank you very much uh, for, for inviting me uh, to talk about telematics and, and why telematics systems are awesome. If it, if it isn't enough that we're, we're reading satellite signals from space and bringing it into a card-sized box to determine the location of the globe, and then turning it around and beaming that information back up into a satellite, if that isn't awesome enough. I hopefully will uh, will uh, share with you uh, enough other uh, uh, benefits of telematics that uh, will further explain why I believe. I know it's a little bit of a square geek thing to say, but why I think telematics is awesome. A little bit of history. Uh, <laughs> Darren hit most of it, uh, most of the stuff that we can share at least in public. Uh, but I did spend 22 years in forestry, mainly in manufacturing, uh, and uh, during that time, obviously, sat on uh, both uh, safety committees as a safety chair. Uh, as well as did uh, a, a, a period of time where I was an uh, 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 internal review committee and, and uh, external safety auditor for the Alberta Forest Products Association. Uh, over 25 years in technology, so during my time in, uh, in forestry, I went from the manufacturing and operational side of the business into, into the technology side, and uh, for the, both the last 13 years I've spent my time in telematics. Kind of gives me a little bit of a different perspective than a lot of the technologists that, that understand the technology and the excitement of that. It, it really positions me to understand kind of the business value and the business uh, uh, benefits of a telematic solution. Very briefly, uh, quickly about the, the company that I'm with. Uh, we're a, a cloud-based uh, telematics platform provider since about 2007. Been in business for about eight years. We've helped over 250, just about 260 customers track about 12,500 vehicles in about 13 countries. So uh, uh, we are uh, uh, two years uh, in the last three, we've been in Alberta's uh, fastest 50 growing companies, and we're also a Google Enterprise uh, partner. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about what is telematics. So you hear all kinds of different, especially when you get technology people involved in, in, in uh, uh, the latest and greatest, you'll get the IoT or the Internet of Things. You'll get M to M or machine-to-machine uh, -machine communications. And telematics kind of fits within that area. Really all it is is it's a combination of two words, uh, uh, telecommunications, which is basically communicating anything over telegraph, telephone, wired, wireless, however and informatics, which is basically information. It's implied that it's kind of in-field information or it's remote information. So really for me, uh, in the simplest of terms, telematics is when companies take a GPS uh, solution uh, or enabled device, put it in their vehicle or on their people, hopefully not in their people, just on their people, uh, or in their equipment, and they pass safety and operating related information uh, to a central place. That to me is telematics, that's all there is to it. There's no real magic other than the fact that we're talking uh, uh, you know, via satellite uh, quite often or cellular. Telematics has come a long way. I, I've been involved, like I said, uh, in the game for about 13 years. Uh, and it started off as a very, very simple track and trace. The, the equipment wasn't very reliable, it was very expensive and you didn't get a lot of benefit or value out of a telematic solution. Fast forward about 13, 14 years, and, and what you're able to do with it now compared to what you were able to do with it then is significantly different. One of the things, and it's kind of pertinent to the forest industry, uh, any resource industry, frankly, is the ability to take customer-specific uh, maps and overlay them in Google. I mentioned we're a Google Enterprise partner. Uh, so our system runs on, and, and a lot of uh, telematic systems out there today run on Google Maps. We're able to use their tools and use a customer's own maps and, and overlay one on top of the other. So knowing where your asset is, is great, good information. Knowing where your asset is on top of your own maps, so you know your own cut block, your own roads, how you look at your own uh, uh, operations in the field, and having your assets on top of that, your vehicles on top of that, is, is way more valuable. If I can report in that I'm hurt, but I can't tell you where, it's not nearly as useful. If I can report in and, and give you a location on the map in the context of your maps, uh, of your locations, it becomes much more valuable. Uh, some of the other advanced capabilities in telematics is around maintenance. 
Um, a, a well-maintained vehicle is obviously a safer vehicle to operate. Um, telematics solutions today will provide that information and push that information into, tele into uh, maintenance systems. Uh, we're getting and moving closer and closer to that connected worker where the, the driver no longer leaves and is isolated in the middle of the cut block, in the middle of the forest. They're, they're able to communicate on an ongoing basis as they move in and out of the, of the forest industry or the forest areas. So why do customers, why do typically uh, organizations uh, implement a telematic solution? The first area is really around, and, and this will get to safety, so this first part is really to talk about telematics in general, what are the values and why people implement them. So the first area is really around location management. Organizations need to know uh, location specific information. Things like what's the trip, in, in, in forestry terms, more like the cycle time, the cycle management. Um, they want to know where has my vehicle been, where has my asset been, uh, where did it stop, how long did it stop, how long did it take to load, all of that type of information. Add on to that, uh, where is my asset now? Maybe you need to know right now where that truck is or where that person is. Maybe you need to know where your first aid attendant is so you can deploy them to, to an, uh, an incident or event in the field. So it's all around location management. That's the first area that organizations uh, implement telematics for. Second area is really around vehicle uh, management. So they want to know where the vehicles are, now they want to know what it's doing. Is it got any engine trouble codes uh, from a maintenance perspective? Uh, what's the fuel consumption? What's the fuel usage like on, on these trips? Um, is there preventive maintenance that's required on those vehicles? So it's all around the management of the, of the asset or the vehicle. The third area that's more pertinent to safety is really around the driver management, the driver behavior monitoring. So it's around, are my drivers, from an efficiency perspective, uh, idling my vehicles or my trucks? Uh, is there other use of, 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 of the vehicle that is maybe not appropriate? And then we kind of branch into the area of safety. Because that's when we start asking the questions of what's the speed the driver is driving at? What uh, is, the, is the speed the driver is driving at in the context of the road? Uh, early on, as I said, the telematics uh, uh, solutions that were much more basic, they used to be able to tell you what the maximum speed was. So if, you're doing, if you didn't want your drivers going over, your vehicles going over 100, I could get notices of when that happens. The problem with that is if I'm doing 100 in a school zone, it's a problem. If I'm doing 100 on the main highway between uh, 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 Prince George and Vanderhoof, if I'm doing 100, that's okay. That's a speed limit. So it's really the understanding the speed of the vehicle in the context of the road that becomes really valuable. So, you know, the, the, the telematic solution or, or people implement them to really start managing that driver behavior and the driver safety. Uh, so those are the three main areas that telematics are, are implemented for. When we, uh, when we talk about telematics adoption, um, so over the last 14 years, I've been in telematics for 15 years, that was pretty early on, we had what we call innovators. So there was the companies that wanted to try out this technology and see if they could drive any value from it. And uh, the very low adoption, very few people would actually start using the telematics solutions. They were very expensive and not that valuable. Fast forward about uh, uh, seven years, uh, to 2007 is when we really started getting the early adopters. The technology got more stable, more solid, and then we're able to see some of the people, some of the organizations get some value out of that, that telematic solution. Really in the last, since 2010, have we really started seeing telematic solutions become common, mainstream, mass-produced product where it becomes reliable, dependable, and affordable. So, and, and able to be deployed on a, on a, a, a wider uh, basis. So after 14 years, we're maybe 25% uh, adopted. And why that's great news and kind of exciting is because there is a whole lot of, uh, of progress we're going to make in telematics that's going to drive a whole bunch more value and a whole bunch more in innovation in the area of safety and efficiency. So typically, and this is where we're going to shift gears a little bit and get into the, the uh, the, uh, the, return, the, the safety value of a telematic solution. Typically, uh, organizations bought telematic solutions for return on investment. That's what they were for. So they would look at looking at reductions in, in fuel consumption. They were looking at uh, 
uh, improving uh, um, efficiency of, of asset utilization. Uh, they wanted to improve the workforce uh, um, utilization. Those things actually were experienced. Um, organizations typically get a return on investment of six uh, to eight months. So great news. But, but the more exciting news and why it was pertinent to this, this uh, conference is more and more now we're seeing organizations get very excited about the safety benefits of a telematic solution. Uh, consumers are buying telematic solutions for the, the ROI or the return on investment, but they're keeping it for the safety benefit. Uh, uh, Fleet Owner Magazine said that they believe telematics is the safety game changer uh, facing the industries today. So what makes the telematics uh, offering interesting from a safety perspective? Well, there's really two kind of areas uh, that is of interest uh, 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 from a safety perspective. There's really kind of the direct safety benefits, which is around in the, if you can visualize it, if you, if you have a harsh acceleration or deceleration event, or even a collision in the middle of nowhere, or for instance, you may hit your emergency button, uh, or you know, a, a myriad of other inputs that indicate a safety challenge uh, happens within a telematics platform. What happens immediately is, is we're able to drive real-time alerts out of that, that incident. So as soon as it happens in the middle of nowhere that you have a collision, instead of having to hopefully see somebody come by or radio in or notice that they didn't show up when they were supposed to, we can, from a telematics perspective, sense the event and notify the appropriate people so that can take the, the appropriate action. Second area uh, of focus is really around speeding and speed management. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, like, it used to be that speed was a maximum speed type of, uh, of uh, uh, tracking. Well, this now is able, because of the advancement in the mapping side of it, we're able to manage the speed on specific roads or road types. Uh, we can load up customer maps and then track the speed or manage the speed of the, the assets against the actual road speed. We can do the same thing we did with the alerts, is we can drive a notification going to the appropriate people uh, to let them know that the speeding violations are occurring and they can take corrective action. The last area is really around that remote or lone worker. Uh, big, big uh, uh, area of concern for uh, many industries, uh, oil and gas for sure, forestry I'm sure also, uh, where you have workers in the bush uh, working alone and, and sometimes, I was talking at the, we're at the trade show also, and, and we were talking to a few individuals, and they, and they mentioned that the, it's a, an interesting challenge, the lone worker, because we, we have a solution that is the uh, check-in, check-out. So if you, it, you check in, it gives you a two-hour timer. Uh, if you run out of time, it'll actually alert somebody, hey, this person hasn't checked in in time. We better send out some help. He says, that's a great idea, but uh, what if I've fallen? and now I can't push the button to check in. So now I've got to wait two hours. So telematics is coming out more and more with technology that help that situation where I've got a pendant on me and if I fall and I stay uh, uh, um, still for 30 seconds or a minute or whatever I set it to, if, if I don't see any movement, I'll actually warn the person I'm going to send in an alert if you don't tell me that you're okay. So the beauty of that is now I've taken that two hour window where I could be laying in the side of the road and I've changed that to about two minutes or whatever else you said. So it becomes that real time monitoring ability of, of the, the person uh, the person safety in the field. So those are the direct benefits. Some of the indirect benefits is all around uh, a better maintained vehicle because it's, it's an absolute proven fact that a better maintained vehicle is safer to operate. Um, uh, telematics positions organizations to better maintain their vehicles. It, it's a tool, like every other tool. It doesn't go in and do the maintenance for you, but it definitely lets you know that it's time to do the maintenance. Statistical analysis of speed, uh, uh, speed, harsh acceleration, other uh, safety related events. So we talked about the direct benefit. Something happens. Something happens that I need to respond to. So I, uh, the telematics sets me up to be able to do that. But now I can look across my history and across my fleet and see statistically what's going on. How many times? What time of the day do people speed the most? Time? What time of the day uh, or what day of the week is the ones that's most at risk? So 
So now I'm, be, I'm going to be able to look at statistically what's going on from a safety perspective and make adjustments. And then lastly, tracking that cause and effect. It's, it's a more of a subtle benefit, but it is absolutely a benefit. What I'm talking about in that area is organizations often, I mean, 22 years in forestry, I went through my fair share of, of initiatives, but you'll, you'll do something with an intent. So I'm going to uh, do a safety, re, uh, a speed reduction uh, initiative. So I'm going to educate all my drivers and I'm going to uh, um, uh, hopefully cause a, a, a reduction in speed and therefore an improvement in safety. The beauty of having a telematic system is now you've got all that information that was before you did the initiative as well as all the information after the initiative. So now I can see what happened uh, what, what, uh, after the initiative, what the effect is of that. So, and, and interestingly, it could even be a, a non-safety initiative. So I want to do an improvement in efficiency, and I can see now all the information leading up to it, and I can analyze all the information after it and see what the effect was of that initiative. So, pretty, pretty uh, indirect benefit of, of a telematic solution, but clearly a benefit. So, the, the next kind of few slides is really specifically around safety uh, and, and around speed reduction. So some key safety information to kind of set that topic up is uh, speed is the leading cause of uh, fatal car crashes in BC and the source here is uh, ICBC and they got their information from, uh, from the RCMP. Uh, 105 people killed in, in speed related crashes in uh, about five years, 2009 to 2014. 50% of all fatalities are speed related. I mean, that just blew my mind when I read that. So 50% of the time, if there's a fatality, it's, it's related to the speed that that vehicle was traveling. In the month of October, 121 crashes on average in that five year span. And that doubles in December, or pretty much doubles. So speed clearly, and, and like I say, what I'm doing is I'm gonna show you what telematics can do in this area specifically. Is, is, a, is a huge safety concern, let's say. Oops, I think I advanced one extra. So here's a, a case study of a company down in, uh, in uh, um, oh, sorry, this one is in Toronto. Uh, they implemented a safety uh, or a telematic solution uh, in October 2014. They were experiencing, you know, right around the 200, 190 to 200 uh, uh, um, speeding incidents uh, per week. And uh, this, they, they tracked two different areas. One was speeding over 110 kilometers, which they consider, okay, it's, it's not good, but you know, it's, it's more acceptable if you want to say that, that way. But they also tracked the ones going over 120. So those to them were the dangerous speeders. And the moment that they implemented the telematic solution, they took that rate down almost 60% on the 110 kilometer uh, speeding violations and over 80% on the uh, 120 speeding violations. So, and it's funny, I came across this case study and, and we absolutely see this all the time, can tell access, where you'll implement a telematic solution and you will inherently, you don't have to wave the stick, you don't have to beat the, you don't have to, like you just have to communicate the fact that you've done it and drivers will adjust their behavior inherently. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. When I saw this case study, I thought, we have absolutely seen this over and over again um, at Kent Telematics. Second area, similar thing, is in the accident reduction. So, so the, here's a, uh, again, this is a municipality down in California. Um, they implemented, or they were going the wrong direction for accidents. They had two types that they were tracking. One was just all vehicle accidents, and the other one was vehicle accidents where speed uh, was related and they were at fault. And they were clearly going the wrong direction. And so what they did in, in uh, about 2008, 2009 is implemented a telematic solution and immediately you can see a significant drop uh, from you know kind of that 30, 35 uh, uh, incidents right down to just over five. Uh, their, their serious incidents went down to one the following year and none the two years following. So immediately, as a direct result of, of implementing that, that uh, telematic solution, they took their accident incident frequency way, way down. So 
That's great. That, and, and, and clearly we see that all the time. Our customers tell us all the time that they realize that type of benefit from, uh, from implementing a safety uh, or a telematics solution. The other key part of implementing any telematics solution is expanding that capability. It's great. It's, when you implement them, you get that benefit that I just talked about. But if you can now extend that through an API, and all an API is is a way to exchange information with the telematics platform. Uh, so when I say API, that's all that means. What it does is it opens up the ability for third-party applications, I'll explain what I mean by that, to integrate into the telematics platform. It enables customers to take information out of the telematics platform and actually integrate it into their own systems. A, a real life example, we, we recently did an integration with uh, core point safety uh, management system. So their, their main, uh, 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 sorry, safety, yeah, safety management system, which basically looks after the uh, incident investigation, action planning, all that type of stuff. So what we're able to do now that we have those two systems talking to each other is when an event occurs in the field, a speeding event, something happens, the driver pushes their SOS button, uh, whatever that might be, it, like I said, in the telematics solution itself, creates that alert, lets the right people know they can respond to that, that issue as they always have. Great value in those two things alone. But when you extend it, now all of a sudden through that API, I can take that incident and I can push that into my safety system. So now I automatically can create an, an uh, incident in the safety management system that I'm now going to use that system and, and do an investigation on it if that's what I'm required. Uh, uh, potentially drive some actions to prevent reoccurrence off of it. Uh, I'm also, if I have to or want to, I can submit that right directly electronically to WorkSafe BC. So that's real functionality that happens today. It's not tomorrow, it, it, it can be done today. And the other beauty is, is that information again can flow back into the telematics platform so I know that that speeding incident, that speeding infraction or when that guy hit the SOS or girl hit the SOS button, that I now have this investigation all around it or this near miss investigation around it that then helps me improve my safety. That I can now statistically look at how many times that happens, what did I do when it happened. Really extends the value of the telematics uh, platform. So that's the, the kind of value and the safety value of telematics in general. When we uh, you know, uh, talk about telematics specifically in forestry and what's happening today, and we, we checked with, with uh, Janet Canfor and made sure it was okay if we, we shared this, but we're in the middle of a project uh, with Canfor and their, and their contractors to do a uh, implementation of telematics to uh, do two things mainly. One is to really kind of understand and drive efficiency into the cycle time, not safety related, but also to improve the driver's safety. Uh, and, and, and they've involved many of their contractors. This isn't the, the exclusive or all-inclusive list of them. But, uh, you know, obviously many, many contractors, probably about 15 of their contractors are involved in this project. So around cycle time improvement, we immediately, uh, you know, provided analysis and, 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 and Camfors, uh, you know, and, and their contractors are working together on this. And, and before I go on, that's kind of the most interesting part of this project to me and at least from our perspective, is, is the way that this was approached was not, I want you to implement this system so that I can check cycle time. And it wasn't the contractors going, ah, we need to. They really sat down together and said, as a partnership, at together, how can we implement a telematic solution that's going to be good for all of us? That's going to drive benefits for you as well as going to drive benefits for us. So it was really a collaborative approach. And, uh, and, and it really, so far, has worked incredibly well. So anyways, back to the cycle time management and some of the benefits that uh, they've already experienced is they identified within you know, the first three months, they've identified a bottleneck in the, in the trailer loader area, which they've invested a little bit of capital in and has already driven time out of that cycle time. And what's interesting about that, and in, in my, my history with, with forestry, we often would look at you know, how do I improve or, or make more efficient this value chain? And typically, or, or sometimes what will happen is you try to drive the cost out here. So yeah, you give it a little squeeze. And what happens is it bulges somewhere else. 
So if I drive and I force you to reduce your costs here, well, you just take more money out of your jeans or, or I incur more cost. Or, so unless you can drive the cost out of the whole thing, it doesn't really benefit anybody. You're just making it harder on somebody else. With telematics uh, helping you, uh, helping organizations, you can actually take costs out of that value chain. So now you can share in the benefits. And that's, I think, what Camfor and their contractors are doing. So that's in, this, in, in the area of, of efficiency. Now, in the area of telematics and safety, uh, there's kind of three main areas that we've already done uh, as part of this project. One is uh, the crash detection reporting. So what we've done as part of this project is we track every second information on the device that's inside the vehicle. And we store that and then we keep dumping it out as we go. So every, 90, every second we're dumping out another second. So, so if a crash uh, event happens, we have 90 seconds of what was happening leading up to that incident stored. And we then can push that in. Uh, and then we can analyze the results. How fast were they going? Did they do a harsh uh, deceleration before? It's almost the black box uh, that's going to help organizations understand the, the, uh, the things around an incident or event. Um, so we also do a, a speed by road management with, with, Camfor, uh, with Camfor's help, where we pull in their information from their GIS files, which has a, an attribute in there around speed, and we're able to now see how uh, fast vehicles and, 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 and drivers are going on, on their roads. So it's very specific to what your requirements are, to what the organization's requirements are, to what the contractor requirements are, instead of an arbitrary 100 kilometer hour speed limit, hopefully that works for you, type of thing. So that's really the, uh, the, the forestry project and, and a quick stat, uh, update on that. Very exciting. Uh, telematics and forestry tomorrow. Uh, I had a very interesting conversation with John actually uh, yesterday and, and others. It was kind of funny because I had the, the semblance of this slide uh, before the conversation, but it, was, but it was all about how can we use telematics in the, the, the forest, no matter whose uh, employees they are, no matter whose drivers they are, no matter whose operators they are, and understand where my key responders are, where my first aid responders are, where my fire responders, like where all of those key resources are. Because maybe West Fraser has somebody out there or another, uh, uh, Tolko's got somebody out there, or, and they're two minutes away from an incident, so wouldn't it be great, what if, <laughs> we heard doctor, uh, the doctor mentioned about, well, you asked the question, what if, what if I could see, no matter who, no matter what company, where my closest, uh, best responder would be? Uh, what if I could dispatch? What if I could communicate with them, no matter where they are? If they're outside a cellular, it doesn't matter. I can communicate with them, let them know there's an incident close by. Really, it's like I said in the, in the one slide around adoption, uh, we're at 25% and, and, and there's many exciting advancements in telematics and I believe uh, working with the forest industry, working with the resource industry and working with the people that work out there, we're going to be able to drive unbelievable uh, value in the world of safety and it really truly improve the safety uh, out in the bush. And that's about it for my presentation. And I thought if uh, we wanted to, I'd definitely have a little bit of time, burn through that a little quicker than I thought I was going to. Uh, normally I walk around quite a bit. So <laughs> um, is there any questions around telematics? And, and yes, yeah. You bet, so great question. Uh, typically, so, so there's, the answer to that is all over the place, but it'll be as small as a deck of cards that just plugs in, so, uh, and as large as a device about that big. So um, it depends on what you're trying to track. Because we can track anything from a tank, so we have a, a satellite battery operated, about you know, and you just put it with a magnetic mount, put it on top of a tank, and it messages in once a day, tells you where stuff is. From a safety perspective, I want to install something into the vehicle that I can tie a button into, that ties into my engine data. That's a, a device that's probably almost this size that gets wired into your vehicle, into the brain of the truck, and then you're able to pull information from that. So, you bet.
absolutely either. So uh, the more you tie in, so the question was, I don't know if everybody heard it, but if you tie in, do you have to tie in these devices into an electronic truck? Or can a, a, a manual, mechanical, manual, can you tie into anything? The answer to that is still both and either. So we always, especially around safety and, 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 and that type of thing, we always tie into the ignition system. So we want to know when the ignition's on, when the ignition's off. Uh, so there's always some level of, of connection. Simplest is power, ground, ignition. That's it. That's all you need. That's right. Or I can tie it into the engine ECM, and I can pull RPM. I can pull fuel consumption. I, so I can go as crazy or as simple as you want. So I, the answer to that is both. I can tie in electronic, or I can tie into the physical. Rod, we'll have a few questions from the floor. So I have a mic, so that'll help a little oh, bit. If, I know we're spread yeah, out sure. a bit. So we've got Reynolds, and then we'll get your question. Rod, you talked about uh, measuring the G-forces you know, prior to an incident. Is anyone actively measuring that for trucks going around a curve, both in the cab, and has anybody actually adapted one to the trailer so that the driver gets information on G-forces as they're going around curves? It's a great question. So, so number one, uh, there is there is the technology and the math to to measure the the, the, the G force within the device going around a corner. The trick is, and I don't know if you've ever tried them. I have actually tried them in my vehicle. Um, it's G force is a funny little uh, uh, calculation. I've actually done it where I've done a slight turn with a deceleration. And I guarantee you, I was not even close to smoke and tires, and the G-force uh, uh, indicator went off. I went t probably three times faster around a corner with no braking, and the G-force indicator didn't go off. So the curve to me was more dangerous than the slight de the slight braking. Uh, but the technology is there, the, and the algorithm is there. The trick is going to be making sure you don't get a whole bunch of false negatives, because then all of a sudden it becomes noise. If, if I get alert after alert after alert saying, hey, look out, I'm, you're going too fast around the corner, and I know I'm not, I'm going to start ignoring them. So that's the first part. Um, around the trailer and, and the communication into the, the cab of the truck, we've, we've done that not in the context of G-Force, but in the context of other things. When, remember I showed the adoption graph We're early on? I see that as being kind of what we evolved to. Um, the technology is there. I don't know of anybody that's actually done a real deployment that's worked uh, around the G4 side of it. Yes? My question is basically similar to the previous gentleman. Um, I'm particularly interested in accident recreation and the cause and effects. And uh, a lot of things contribute to an accident, right? Speed uh, and terrain, particularly terrain. I was wondering if the the terrain model, like if you have telematic, you have point source information, can you relay it to the surrounding terrain? Can you recreate the curvature of the, you know, the detail that yeah. would be required? Uh, current telematics devices are the ones that we have in, uh, integrated. Have, it would be too granular or uh, too coarse to be able to drive that type of analysis. The closest we could come to that is uh, uh, using the mapping uh, engines. Uh, and, and understanding the contour to that extent. So the, it really isn't that fine-tuned. Like when you look at GPS in general, as impressive as it is, pulling, pulling satellite out of the uh, signals out of space, you're still kind of in that 10 meter uh, um, um, error zone. So you know, that's not going to be tight enough to be able to do uh, you know, a curvature analysis and so on. Now, that being said, some of the devices have a 3D axis uh, uh, that th they're just coming out now. Uh, the, the 3D axis has been out for a long time, but integrating it into the telematics device is just starting to happen now where we're able to understand kind of yaw and, 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 and slopes. So. Just a quick follow-up question. Sure. Can you do speed over bridge? Speed over bridge? Yeah. Uh, we absolutely could. A few factors in speed over bridge would be your, your distance. So. A typical telematics device sends in a message every period of time. So let's say it's every 30 seconds, just for, for, for argument's sake. If you go over that bridge in the 30 seconds, you won't have any data about what you traveled on that bridge. You'll have the data before, 
you'll have the data after. So geofencing again, typically you would geofence that, that bridge and then, but if I drive through it before that, that device message is in, I'm not going to know it, right? So the way I can fix it is I can crank up the number of messages that the device does. So I can, I mean, we can go up to about a message every 10 seconds, uh, but then of course that drives your data cost up. So it's all about what's the information you're looking at. Now, sorry, before I leave that point, if I've got 100 trucks or 1,000 trucks or going across that bridge, the likelihood of me being able to pick up enough statistical information to be able to do analysis is probably pretty, pretty, uh, pretty likely. So if you want to say, if you speed on the bridge, I want to respond to it, tough to do. If you want to say, I want to know what the average speed is going over that bridge and see if it's appropriate, that's doable. Now, that being said, you can, like, we can do sub-second recording of information and storing on the device and we can send it in a bunch at a time. So we could do that type of analysis if that was important, but it would drive up the, uh, the cost of the telematic solution for sure. Other questions? <laughs> I'll start with you because you're closest. <laughs> oh, well, I guess one of my first questions is we're, we started implementing a, a GPS tracking. You know, I'm not sure who our provider is, but um, one of the things that we're starting to find out right away is with our feller bunchers uh, trying to build a, a proper system. So the antennas are always getting damaged for two-way radios, etc., and stuff like that. And uh, I guess another probably from a worker perspective, I think a lot of the guys feel quite offended that we are uh, now putting this into our program. For myself, I don't really care, but um, from their point of view, they, uh, they, a lot, some of the guys are more bothered by it and other guys don't really care, so. Yeah, uh, both, on both points. So, so first of all, the, the antenna, the, the equipment and, and kind of protecting that, definitely in Forest Street. It, it, it's actually one of the more brutal uh, industries on our type of gear. We've done, so our gear uh, from a satellite perspective uh, can be covered in polyurethane, uh, UHMW, whatever you want to call it. So you can protect the antennas and, and install the devices inside the cab so in our telematic solutions and most telematic solutions. So if you plan out how and where you're going to put your antenna and you do provide some protection, you can make it last pretty well. It's not going to be perfect, I guarantee it, because it is very, like you get the, the, how a stick can get through some things and, and puncture and d damage, it's unbelievable. But we do have them last fairly well. Now, we only have them on forwarders because we're pretty new to the forest. I'm not new to the forest industry, but our company is. Uh, so we have them on some forwarders and trucks and that type of thing, and they're standing up very well. Uh, uh, we don't have that experience with the processors and the bunchers and so on. Uh, the second part of the, of, the, of the question around kind of um, the concern of, of for, for people getting these, the big brother, let's call it that, because that's what it is. Um, very, very often what I find is how you use the system that you implement drives the response to it. The initial response, you wouldn't believe the number of times I've, I've had that exact same concern uh, expressed to me. But by the time you're done implementing, and when they see the company start using it to improve their safety and find it and help, like it's not a, they're not using it to beat you over the head. The only reason they would is if you should be. So the only people that are concerned about it after they realize the company's not being big brother are the ones that should be concerned about it. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting transition uh, that happens within about the first three to six months of an implementation. Uh, that's what we find a lot of times uh, with our customers, anyways. I, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, I noticed you never mentioned anything about cost. Uh, mm -hmm. how, can you give us an example of how much it would cost for 10 logging trucks to monitor speed? To monitor speed. Uh, so uh, do, do you care if uh, it's satellite or cellular? Uh, is it okay to get the information? If you go outside the satellite range, is it okay to get the information kind of after the fact a little bit? Looking for estimates. We'll, we'll say satellite only. Just based uh, on remote. Okay, so so rough and dirty hardware in general is about five six hundred bucks. Can go up to two thousand if you want to go crazy. Can get as cheap as about two three hundred if you want to go real cheap. 
uh, for speed, you're probably looking at about that $500 range for the hardware. And the monthly amounts are you know, between 20 and 50 a month. And what drives that is how much data do you want? The more messaging you want, the more money it's going to cost. Uh, Go ahead. The other part that uh, I wonder if your institution has considered that is out and about there in an epidemic scenario is um, combating distracted driving. Yeah, so it's, it's a, that's an interesting problem. One that we haven't uh, addressed uh, um, specifically. We probably 80% of our deployments don't have any any driver input, except for maybe an emergency button. Uh, so we don't cause distracted driving. Now, interestingly, what I've been reading a lot about is uh, other systems that can tie into the telematics system that will tell them, oh, you're using your phone uh, or you're using uh, the, 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 the display, because we do provide a display also. So if you're doing that, the telematics solution can sense that and then disable it. We haven't done that, and none of our customers have taken us there. There's no doubt in my mind we will go there at some point. Yeah, for sure. Yes? Rod, what are some of the limits to the coverage? Are there possible for interruptions, or are there limits in extension? And you mentioned already a difference between, you mentioned cellular and you mentioned satellite. So can you elaborate a bit on that area? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, most people know kind of the cellular coverage and so on and so forth. Um, so, so definitely from a pure cellular coverage, we're getting better and better. We're going further and further out into the bush. But there is definitely areas that you're not going to get cellular coverage. Telematics providers now have uh, what they're calling uh, dual mode, uh, even tri-mode, uh, where the device itself has both satellite and cellular but it's smart enough to use cellular only, because it's cheaper, whenever it can. As Soon as it senses that it's in satellite land, it'll actually switch over to satellite and stop sending in so many messages, otherwise it'll break the bank. So it'll say, what do you want sent in? Do you want emergency when I push my SOS button? Do you want my check-in, check-out? You know, what else do you want sent in over satellite? And I'll send those ones in, and I'll store the rest of them. And then when I come back into cellular land, I'll pump all that information in so that you'll know what happened while I was out in the bush. So, so with that, with that dual mode, we basically eliminate that kind of that coverage issue. Uh, so if that's important, it's a more expensive device and it costs more money per month, but we can absolutely, uh, and, and telematics providers everywhere, can provide that functionality, that capability. Okay, we have about uh, five minutes left, so cool. time for a couple of questions. I got one here, and then if there's another one, I'll come around cool. to you. Quick question on the driver input: Will there be? Is there options, or will there be options where, like for hazards, um, hazards that they come across going down the road? You say, and so then you can track where there's a predominant area of, you know, deer, or elk, or whatever. That's. Uh, uh, will there be that capability? There is no doubt. Well, I, I don't know if you've used the, the Google uh, uh, interface where you can report. There's a few software packages out there that uh, just on your personal uh, that you can report this happened or, is, or uh, uh, what do you call it, radar detect, you know, uh, uh, police radar, like those types of events, what they call it is crowdsourcing. Same thing will happen. There's no doubt in my mind. There's not a lot of people doing it today, uh, but there, that will absolutely be part of the telematics evolution is that ability to record not just uh, uh, kind of safety concerns, but also other uh, municipalities want to be able to record when they see weeds so that they know, you know where to send the, 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 the people to, to deal with the weed control. So for sure, that capability will be there. And the technology's there to be able to do that today, but we haven't had a lot of demand for it or in the telematics industry in general, so we haven't done it at this time. But yeah, good question. Are there any other questions? Got just a few minutes left. Perfect. Excellent. Thanks very much. Thanks for your attention. Appreciate it.